With a new man at the helm, the government started taking on a new face. And we have a lot of people in cabinet, I am just so pleased to say, who are born again Christians. It's just the finger of God and it's what the Lord is doing. Taito Wonga Vakatonga was a local pastor. Now he is the president of the Senate. This is the power of prayer. I, I was uh, nominated where I am now, it just because of prayer, just because of him. Apa Salome Tundreo, another humble man of God, was tapped to head up the newly created Ministry of Reconciliation. But that's our challenge. We have to get our leaders, the professional leaders, the religious leaders, the political leaders, to see that one vision. Andi Azanatha Thauthau was the last candidate to win a seat in the 2001 elections. But God and the nation were waiting for her. Now an active member of the Prime Minister's Cabinet, Thauthau's extended portfolio includes responsibility for women, poverty alleviation, and social welfare. I'm just ripe to pass on the Word of God. And I have no hesitation at all in sharing the Word of God with just anybody and even in trying to get them to receive salvation. And I do that in the house. In all my speeches, I would start off by praising the Lord God, by giving glory to Jehovah. With a united church and a government teeming with godly servants, Fiji has begun to recover its spiritual heritage. A lot of people never wanted to go to church, but I begin to see them. They want to. They ask me, when I is the revival? A revival torch commissioned by President Ilo Ilo at the Albert Park rally has been slowly making its way through the Fijian archipelago. Many towns and villages have greeted it with great emotion. When they, they carry the torch around, the chief, you know, they, they were crying. Everybody was so emotional about it, and they were saying, it is like, you know, the, the light coming to our soul. It's like the gospel coming to our soul for the first time. We see that the fire of God was able to, to be spread, you know, uh, throughout the nation. The whole of the Fiji group will be given back to the Lord. That's what I want to see. has not always stirred hope within the Fijian soul. In an earlier, but not so distant age, its flickering light illumined fearful rituals and unspeakable horror. The land groaned under the weight of superstition and sorcery. Ancestral spirits roamed freely, promising abundance and demanding their due. By the side of the temple, great heaps of human bones lay whitening in the sun. Priests convulsed and spoke in strange voices. It was a world where chiefs held absolute power. The lives of commoners hung on their prevailing mood or appetite. Women were given as tribute or taken as a prize of war. Tribal fighting was gruesome and frequent. Fueled by revenge and greed, violent warriors depopulated entire villages, even islands. Fallen enemies were carried off the battlefield on poles, long pigs to be cooked and eaten. Worse still, these cannibalistic instincts were sometimes directed at the living in an act of appalling cruelty. Fijian chiefs occasionally ordered doomed victims to cut firewood to roast their own bodies. According to reports from early Methodist missionaries, the royal capital of Bao stank for days as human flesh was cooked in every hut. Even when the days of cannibalism had passed, 
the power of the fire remained. On the island of Benga, the Suwau clan lived under the sway of Menahuni-like spirits, known as Veli. At the edge of Rakua village, clan priests filled the Lovo pits with hot stones and began to walk on them. This is one of the villages that perform witchcraft to that great level, to the high, highest degree. Witchcraft was really strong in the village. That's where the big Lovo was. Penny Soro Wali, high priest of the Sawao clan, began treading fire at the age of 15. As I began to walk on the hot stones, I never felt any heat at all. The Veli were summoned to observe each performance. Before this ceremony, normally go up to the mountain where these people live, the demons. We took 